to another episode of Tate's Taco Bite, your daily bite of DJ, episode one zero sixty-seven. Man, we have had this for a second. It's amazing. Love what has been happening with that. Um, so what um gonna talk about today? A couple things. One. Um, want to do a huge, uh, shout out to, uh, Trevor. Um, if it's Trayvon, I apologize. Um, but, uh, great interview, you know, with, with Jack Levin today, sort of scratched the surface on a lot of things. Um, you know, so if you guys haven't had a chance to check that out, search for that on YouTube, T R V O N. Um, and then I had to act, add a uh, Jack Levin to the search to find the video from today. Um, some really great info in there. Um, and I'll break that down over the next, uh, next couple of days, um, too, on my end, just from what, um, I picked up from that and, uh, always open to discussion to see how, uh, what I might've missed as well. What did you pick up on? What did you hear? Um, so that's sort of what got going on there. Um, but, um, Jack talked about a lot of stuff. Um, big takeaways. Um, as of today, and, uh, you know, what it seemed to look like is that Jack was uh, hinting that testnet for X1 chain will be up within two to six weeks, um, possibly eight weeks. Um and so, you know, when Jack has set, set a date for something like that, you know it's either met or before. Um, then the other big piece of that as well is that it sounds like uh, testnet won't turn into mainnet until, like, maybe Q1, uh, end of Q1 of 2024. He may have been thinking it was all within the same year because it was just sort of like, you know, circling a, an area time date area um but uh yeah we hope to get to more answers on that and get that out um some of the cool stuff that he talked about with it being a polygon zk uh edge is you know the, the separation of making ethereum uh eth the consensus layer you know the execution layer uh or settlement layer with X1 chain being uh, the execution layer. Um, sort of cool concept of turning a, a roll up in reverse. Um, as you know, that's one of the cool things that we're able to do. Um, tech can go both ways. Um, and so that's going to be a really interesting feature. Right now, um, once it comes live, there will be uh, Zen burning to get x1 token on erc as an erc20 on eth erc20 token but it will also be a mirrored token on the zen one chain testnet so technically for one burn you get two tokens um so um we'll see we'll learn more about that what the ratio of of the burn rate is to earn tokens but it is a 1 billion token supply uh 20% has been allocated for community drop um within um and I don't know if they're including uh zen burns within that or elsewhere um one of the things that Jack did talk about was going with um possibly going after some VC funding as well um and the way he'll be going about doing that, he touched on very briefly. Um, and, uh, you know, um, public notice has been given of uh, going after uh, funding. So uh, we'll see what happens within the next 90 days of that. Um, one of the things I would love to point out is uh, there's Zen on nine other chains other than ETH. Um, right now, um, it seems Polygon might be the next runner, um, especially with uh, Jack choosing um, Polygon as the fork. Uh, Dion, I see you. Welcome. Um, 
come on up if you want for a minute before we uh well as we close this out or catch up for the night um so as uh the Zen will be burned. Polygon looks like it will be the next piece. The main reason why I say that is not only uh, X1 chain being a polygon edge fork, um, there's also a lot of testing going on with Mumbai, which is polygons test net, both on the Zen NFT side and the Zen token side. So go look at the block explorer. You can see exactly what I'm talking about. Um, and yeah, that's sort of a little interesting piece there. Um, we'll see how that goes. And, and what that does uh, for the next layer. Did the sound like uh, next token um, got is getting sort of not pushed to the back burner, but is getting pushed to the peace side. Um, so pretty amazing time there, and we will see. Tiny Sora, Dion, how are you doing? Uh, good. I'm actually at the gym right now. Do we even have an audience? I don't see any. Well, uh, yeah, yeah, that is a, a late night uh, schedule. So as of right now, no. But I uh, usually get 20 to s or more people to listen to it on recording. So wait, what's the point of talking if there's no audience? <laughs> Tion is, uh, I, I like you, but like the, the uh, man, I don't know. I, a lot of people listen to it afterwards, you know, not everyone's on your schedule. Not everyone lives how you live. No, I, I know. I was more so asking the fact that, you know, there's no audience here. So why were – it wasn't for me. It was for you. Like, I was asking for your benefit. Of, but, I mean, I get you explained it. It's recorded. Okay, so it makes sense. But okay. Yeah. And, you know, I've done this for 160 days. I've had anywhere from uh, – 250 people on stage or in, in the room with over people listening to just me and my grandma and uh, you know, or me just talking to myself uh, with what I see in the market and what I see building. So, you know, it's uh doesn't matter. Do it for me. Why do you go to the gym? Um, because society demands it. Um, I don't really think so. Yeah, no, I do. I this is the first. I mean, 2022 was the first year I've ever done it. So uh, I've never worked out consistently in my life because I never felt like I needed to until finally 2022. Because I'm now 30 years old, and I'm like, well, I guess society thinks I if I don't do it, then I must be a then I'll be left behind. Um, I'm just a realistic I'm... person. I'm sorry that 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 you circle yourself with with people like that. I I, I know you. I don't circle myself with I, people like that. I don't circle myself with people. I like that. I know you, and I want to just say I think you're fucking an amazing person. So fuck society on making you think on I'm making you women. think that you have to do that. Women that don't I know you're a fellow man. You're a fellow brother. Of course, you'll say that those things to make me feel good. You're just saying that, but you tell women of today's day and age, because that's what they need to hear. They need to not not create this fucked up society we have, um, uh, as well as this the bad men, of course, not just women. Oh my god, sorry. Maybe <sighs> maybe maybe it's the women you're going after if they're looking at you for no. just your looks. No, you know? I don't. I don't. I don't. I I don't. It's just, I, I'm just too affected by what I see in social media these days. Yeah. And it sounds me. Um, so you are, you're saddened by society, social media, yet you perpetually follow it. I don't follow it. I can't escape it. It's everywhere. I can't escape it even if I want to. It's 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 the hot ocean we swim in. You tell you tell me uh -huh. to not follow it when we're in it. Just be more realistic, man. I don't know what dream world you live in, but we you live in reality. I live in reality. I've I've been bullshitted too many times by people who love to bullshit in this world, and I just I, I'm sick and tired of the bullshit. Yeah. 
Yeah, no, bullshit sucks. You know, sometimes, you know, it smells. But you always get to feel its presence, whether it's, you know, and where you give it a, give it a, I don't know, man. Um, If you're looking at, I've told you this before, but I feel like sometimes you look at stuff very pessimistically. I don't. I just try to be realistic because I used to be incredibly optimistic, but I've been beaten, beaten up for being too optimistic. I've been told far too many times that I'm too energetic or I'm too all these things. And it's like, all right, you tell me you like optimistic people, but you really don't. Society says they want positivity, but they don't. It's all toxic positivity at the end of the day. I'm I'm sorry that you feel that way, man. I'm sorry that that you allow allow that to fucking. Uh, I'm gonna say this, man. I, I'm sorry that you allow that that to pollute yourself. Um, I, I don't allow it to pollute myself, man. I've just I've lived all these years trying to be a positive, but society has beaten me up for it. So so here, how about this? Let's re-roll for a second here. So people know who the heck you are. What was the, what was what's your what's your current project? Like what am I working on? Well uh, Yeah. What's the current project you're working for? So I had a full time job until this stupid Sam Bateman fucker, you know, did what he did. And uh yeah. Got- let go and uh, now I'm uh, trying to get a new full time job but uh, in the meanwhile I still got to pay bills because that's the thing that's a thing okay. that most people most people have all right to do. so I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna stop you there because you what what do you do in web3 I'm a product designer yeah what's your experience uh, well I've been in web3 since 2015 before the so I didn't. I didn't ask you how long. What's your experience? What's the last job you worked for? You you broke up there. You muted yourself. Sorry, no. I'm just in the elevator. I, I just left the gym. Um, I actually have to get back to my apartment right now. So. Um, All right, but no. This this is a job interview. What's what's the last job you worked for? Um. Sure. I mean, it's a startup you haven't heard of, but it's on my, I don't think anyone has heard of because it's, it's not launched yet. I, I uh, stop. I, I'm, I'm not asking for mumble jumbo. I'm asking what's the name of the company you last worked for? It's called Cultos. And I have heard of that company. I've heard of that company because of you. What did you, what is that company? What was that company working to do? Uh, they were trying to create a web three brand loyalty solution. Okay. Amazing. So then my next question, what did you do for them? Well, I, I tried to, des- I worked on designing their MVP and iterated on the, on one of their client projects as well. Um, it was basically, yeah, two products that I was in charge of. Uh, and, and the client project was the one that was more higher priority. Um, and it was with a big toy company, um, second to Mattel. Uh, nice. But um, yeah, and it was almost um, launched before I got let go. Yeah. Yeah. All right. And what were you, what, what job were you working with? What company were you working with before that? Good Dollar. Oh man, tell me about Good Dollar. Uh, good Dollar was a good company. It was an organization that was a pioneer in the co- in the intersection of uh, universal basic income and Web3. They were the first to launch such a project. Um, and I was one of the early adopters back in uh, back when they first launched. Um, yeah, and I, I was their lead designer and I Got to work on a bit of their MVP redesign as well as their, uh, uh, whatchamacallit, um, 
I got to kickstart a re- user research project with them. Nice. But then, yeah, but then Terra happened, and okay. that's who'd you work with before before Good Dollar? Well, uh, that is something I I technically feel like I probably shouldn't say, but I was overemployed. <laughs> I overemployed myself with three different Web3 jobs. Um, but it was also not, I mean, it, I was also trying to get out of a Web2 job I had at the time. So at one point in time, I had one Web2 job and two Web3 jobs, and then I transitioned out of that Web2 job to three full time Web3 jobs. <laughs> nice. So yeah. what, was the co- what, was, what was the company before Good Dollar? I mean, it was three different ones. It was Passage Protocol, Tempest Finance, and uh, and Flakes. Nice. And what did you do at Tempest? No, no, no. Tempest. T e m p u s. Tempest. Thank you. No, 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 no. Sorry, there's no T at the end of Tempest. Tempest. I I, no. I accentuated it because to to pull a point, and it sounded like I said a T. I apologize. Tempest. Yeah, Tempest Finance. Like, that's it. Oh, uh, to be honest, I feel like I probably even, shouldn't even say these things because, ah, uh, whatever. Um, wh- why are you? It feels like I'm being interrogated. Why? Why are you asking me all these questions? You're being interviewed. I'm being interviewed. We yeah. have no audience, man. It feels weird. I'm That's interviewing you. Right. Hey, hey, man. You came onto my show. And I know you, and I love you, and I know I know half of this stuff already. And I'm pulling it out because who knows? What you manifest comes back to you, man. And you want to ne- manifest negativity? Go right ahead. You're gonna. It's, it's gonna come right to you. You want to take? You want to po- swallow that pill of society norms and stuff like that? Then my question is why you're even why are you even in web three? But oh I know gosh. No, don't, I'm sorry, you're giving me bullshit. Look, I'm not manifesting any negativity. I'm just being realistic here. I don't believe in being like in fake. I don't believe in fakeness, okay? Okay. So I like being authentic. Yeah. Doesn't society value authenticity? So, so t- I'm sorry, but don't bullshit me and say that I'm, I'm manifesting negativity because I'm not manifesting negativity. I'm manifesting authenticity here. Okay. Anything. Call, it, call it what you want. But um, when you're doing it the way you're doing it, I think, you, the results will come that, that, that you manifest. Um, and we've talked. So you might have been a little looser. At that time, you were a little happier, but, uh, you know, man, you need to know, like, people need to know what you've done to just even have a glimpse of an idea of what you can do. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I've just been hurt a lot. Hurt people hurt people. So maybe that's why it sounds like I'm being negative, but. I'm just someone do you, who's do you, do you want to do you want to know how much money I've helped companies raise in 2022? I why how does that relate? Why does that matter to me? I'm sorry. I don't Oh cuz cuz you you think that you're the only person that's ever been hurt. No, I don't think I'm the only person that has ever been hurt. No. See, again, you're you're pulling you're bullshitting. I'm not. I'm I'm fishing. I'm just a realistic person, okay? So, so, I, so I, don't, I don't believe in bullshit. I don't believe in lying. I don't believe in being fake because um, I've been hurt a lot by fake people, by fakeness. Yeah. So, so I'm just done with that. And there's a book called The Art of Not Giving a Fuck. So I'm also just trying to I guess live that out now, like nowadays, because that's the uh, yeah. Um, 
sorry, I didn't even intend to actually come on here to talk. I just, I was just curious because I don't know. I just was curious and I clicked on it and then there was nobody in the audience. And I was like, why is he talking still? And then, and then you invited me to speak. And so, so I, I'm, I'm sorry, but like, I, I know you're probably trying to help, but I'm, I'm also just tired. I just finished working out and I got to go back and like unwind and I, uh, maybe another time. Congrats. Gotta... Congrats on a year, year of it in the gym. Yeah. Thank you. I've made progress. That's for sure. I've made progress. Oh, yeah. Have your dance moves made progress? I would say so. I, I guess I don't, I don't know. I haven't really, I don't know how to gauge if it's made progress or not. <laughs> okay. I'm not you got, any... you got some good, Hey, you got some good dance moves and you can hit some high notes that are amazing. I, I was wa I was watching some of those videos again, and and, and you, you you got a beat, man. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, no, I've always been a musical person. But see, like that's the thing. Like, I mean, I'll I'll give a little taste of like how society has hurt me. Is is like society doesn't seem to value diversity in individuals. Um, they like to put people in a box and. Like I used to be a very musical, artistic person, and uh, uh, and and people just kept thinking I was the music guy. And it's like I'm not just the music guy. I I can do more than just music. Um, and so I I like pivoted to getting myself in tech. And then people thought that I was just the designer tech guy. And it's like I'm not also just a tech bro. I'm also a musician. And it's like fuck why can't you people just like look at people as whole people and stop putting people in a fucking box people aren't just one stinking thing like i i'm more than just one thing and and so it's just like why can't people value people for their whole selves and it seems like society just people just lack the ability to do that <laughs> Yeah, no, and I, and um, I think that, uh, uh, man, all right, I, I understand the pigeonhole thing, but when you, you expect people to see more than one thing in, in how short of a time? in how short of a time yeah i don't know like like you want me to actually give you a number in like minutes or hours or seconds like that's that's a weird question i don't know how well, to answer no. that question you know i'm i'm asking like yeah, the first time you meet someone and you just talk about tech no how I are they supposed to know you're you're more than that because in the past, I would say I'm more than one thing, and they'll be like, oh, my gosh, that's a lot. Oh, you're too much. It's like, what do you mean I'm too much? I gave you freaking three facts about myself, and you think that's too much? Like, is your brain peanut-sized? You can't seem to handle three pieces of information? Like, what is wrong with people? <laughs> like, you give, them, you give them an inch, and they think, and they, like, it, it, it's, it's stupid. People seem to be, like... You know, that's, that's just a weird question because you, you don't seem to think I've tried. I don't come to conclusions because I haven't tried any. Like, I think people generally come to the conclusions they come to because they've tried all alternatives and the conclusion is a result of what they've tried. Yeah. So isn't that on them and not on you? No, it's not on me. Yeah, it is on them. And that's why I'm pissed off because it's like you can't like the average human being can't seem to handle three pieces of information about another human being. You tell a human being, I'm a musician, I'm a designer in tech and I love, I don't know, video games. And they're like, oh my gosh, you're too much. That's overwhelming. That's not overwhelming. That's normal. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not judging but I am, um, you know, because I don't expect you to change off of this. But uh, my perspective is, is if that's the type of people that you, you circle that, that I don't feel that. circle those 
people, man. Like, it's almost every person you... Like, see, this is why... I'm sorry, that's bullshit. You're assuming that I circle around... I, on average, I don't even circle around myself with anyone. Because I'm too busy with all the things that I'm busy with. I'm busy with my, my freelance work now because I got laid off. And I've got two contracts I'm juggling. And I have a third one coming. And I have a start of them trying to work on on the side. And now I'm 30 years old. And I'm now trying to also fucking date. And it's like, and I got family to worry about. And it's like, I barely have time to circle around myself with anyone. Given, I mean, you know, like, so, so don't say, oh, oh, it's the people you're circling yourself around. It's also... I'm referring to my past experiences, uh, like accumulatively over the years, over the last like, like decade or so, or half a decade to a decade. Like this isn't just like over the last five days or five months. It's like over the last five to 10 years of my life. Okay. So uh, to me, you know, you, you said tech, music, and games. That sounds like a pretty cool, awesome, well-rounded thing that all sort of both hits left and right side brain stuff, as well as gives gives you a wide range of skills. Right? Yeah, I agree. I totally agree with that. I'm so glad you you can see that. You're clearly you know? not the average human being. You're clearly above average. And I wish there was more people like you in this world, but sadly there aren't. They, they are. <laughs> There's a lot of people like that, you know, like, yeah, there's a lot of people like that. And I know, you know, a lot of people like that as well. Um, so this is the first I've heard of it though. What are you starting your startup on? Congrats. Already, uh, th uh, thank you. It's just been a side gig over the last, or si no side thing, not a gig. Um, it's not launched yet or anything. I mean, because, you know, I got to pay this thing called bills. You know, there's something called life, life expenses or whatever. Um, anyway, uh, it's just a thing I've been working on on the side since late 2021. And it's a refi startup all about, uh, it's a DAO all about circular economics. But I mean, that's what we aspire to be, but we're not there yet. Um, and, and it's gone through multiple iterations. And the most recent iteration is really actually like a very recent iteration. It's like a two week iteration. Um, anyway, so this iteration is, uh, it's actually kind of hard to explain in a short amount of words, but um, long story short, it's got two major sides to it. Uh, one side is a web three facing side. The other is a web two facing side and the web three facing side is going to be a learn to earn platform that um, features Circular economy web three projects such as Dtrash DAO, Litter Token, and Plastics.io. Um, and then uh, on the web two facing side, there's going to be a recycle to earn protocol uh, whereby people can earn a token for recycling their uh, clothing so that they can redeem the token for rewards with sustainable fashion brands. Keep in mind, this is all MVP. That's going to be the first use case, which is the world of fashion slash clothing, but we want to expand into the worlds of like electronics or, uh, and plastics and, and food waste uh, amongst others. Um, and then uh, there's going to be a marketplace component to it as well, uh, whereby that's going to span both the web three and the web two facing sides in which it's going to include an NFT marketplace as well as a peer to peer marketplace. Yeah. Cool. There you go. There you go. Um, I would I would suggest uh, looking at C sweepers and may, maybe adding that to your Web three facing side. They're doing some really cool stuff in removing plastics uh, from the ocean and then turning it into clothing items. Um, and then um, I'm I was working with this lady Kate from Australia. Australia has this really cool program, you know, recycling plastics for a little voucher. Uh, for like the, it's outside the convenience store. So like you go return plastic bottles and stuff and you get a voucher that you can use to get like some food out from inside and stuff like that. Um, and she was looking, she's working on building that out in Dubai. Okay. Cool. There's, so there's some cool stuff there. Like there, that's some cool stuff. Like the refi stuff, the regen, you know, yep. um, some really, really cool stuff there, man. Yeah, yeah, no, I know, I know. 
Yeah. So. Yeah. All right. Um, well, uh, th- thank you. I, I mean, I would have. You muted yourself, Dion. Oh, sorry. Uh, oh, we got people now. Um, actually, I uh, I gotta run. I gotta get back to my apartment. All right. Yeah. Hi, Philip. What's up, Tion? Hey, I know you said you have to run, but f- before you run, uh, can you give closing words? Closing words. Uh, okay. Well, it was nice catching up with you. Um, and uh, <laughs> nice to meet your two friends. Um, and I'll just catch y'all later. <laughs> All right, Tian. I'll talk to you See later. See you, dude. Have a great night. Thanks, you too. Bye. Philip, Kelvin, welcome. Yo, man, what's up, babe? How's life on the other side of the interwebs? Yeah, dude, life is great. Hey, life is super great, man. I'm just good. I'm just good, man. Good to hear. Good to hear. Phil, did you go to the Polka House event tonight or last night? I did. And the Polka Dot event, man, I'll be honest with you, um, it was ran by like a whole bunch of kids. And they just, I was sitting there and I just didn't really understand what they were like talking about. Like they had maybe like three slides about Polka Dot and their parachain, but they didn't explain anything. And then they just jumped to panel. Okay. And they just wanted what, what, to talk to them, talk about themselves. Ah, uh-huh. what uh, are they creating a new parachain, or were they talking about a specific parachain? Dude, I don't even know. Like, I, I, I literally don't even know. Like, okay. everyone was from like a different thing. Like, no one was uniformed. Like, it was really badly presented. Oh man! All right. I know, I know they, they had gotten originally had had a location that ended up um, uh, getting uh, f- you flipped the Dow, on right? them. And yeah, we, and then um, they reached out, and David Fang, uh, David Fung was able to get them uh, rise the that location there where they were at. Nice. Yeah, and what's 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 funny is I was at Rise last week for uh david fung's uh monthly event there with like mech c alpha io um block fills and a few other projects um it was it was really good david threw off a threw a great event then um so i know he's sort of doing sorry, it the i thought favor. my mic was off i didn't mean to sneeze on you <laughs> oh got the sneeze on me not the first time someone sneezed on me today So, but, but yeah, uh, no, dude, like overall, it was a real, okay. Overall, it was really goodly planned, like properly planned. Like they had alcohol, they had sushi, like it was definitely like a really good vibe. They had really good entertainment. Like it was a really good event. I just wish the people that were talking just fucking had someone else that didn't know. Like, they had nothing, no statistics. They didn't, they didn't show anything. You know, the only thing that they showed, you would know because it's a polka dot thing. It was like this big fucking circle. And on the inside of the circle was like a whole bunch of like pink. Uh, and it was like all cross cross chain. It was like XCM or some shit is what he said. Cross chain multiplier or whatever. Yeah. Like XCM the only is, thing is, that they went piece. over on polka dot. Yeah, um, man, you know who I'm waiting, wanting to see more what they build out on Polkadot with their parachain is Nodal. Dude, I, I just want to know what the fuck Polkadot is doing with Kadena. Hmm, you'd have to ask Kadena that. I asked like some of the Polkadot niggas and I was like, yo, like, what, what, what can y'all do? 
like they're all swagged out with their polka dot shit dude it was the funniest fucking thing they had the polka dot hat polka dots uh like zip up like it was the funniest thing and it's just like uh i i have i have my uh i have some polka dot swag i have a t-shirt and i have a hat and i have a mug that i got in amsterdam and so that that mug has been following me around the world i love it um do you but, just uh, do Digital Nomad now? No, um, a, a little bit, but um, setting up a uh, shop in Hell's Kitchen. Oh, really? But, yeah. That's cool. Um, and the big piece on that is uh, just central location to a lot of different other places. And it, you're like, wait, how is New York central? It's a really good jump point. Um, Dude, it is. Yeah, you can get on a flight fucking anywhere from here. It's a great yeah. hub. It, you know, I literally, literally got on a train in New York yesterday afternoon. Not even late got, afternoon, like three o'clock. Do you have roommates? Like, is it a big apartment? Uh, uh, and then um, got on a train, and next thing you know, ended up in Miami at six o'clock tonight. Okay. You know, didn't even have to move. Same train. It was amazing. Did you ever go to Europe? I have. What parts? Um, been Paris twice, Amsterdam, London. Can you talk about uh, Paris? What do what do we what do we want to talk about Paris about? I've been thinking about. I'm kind of at a point in my life where I'm kind of financially free, and I really yeah. want to go explore, and I really want to go to France. I don't really want to go to Paris. I want to go to other parts of France, but I don't know. I'm just too scared. I haven't, I haven't gotten to get to go. I have not yet been able to go anywhere outside of Paris yet in France. So I've only been Paris. Um, but I might suggest if you're able to, um, Lisbon or even Dubai. Dude, I've been thinking Dubai. I've been, I, I, I really thought because it's so fucking safe. Yep. It's so safe. Like, I, I, I want to experience that. Like, I don't feel safe in New York. I don't feel safe in Houston. Like, I, I, I've been to a lot of American cities, and I just don't feel safe in them. Yeah. I remember, I remember last year during Consensus, one, um, one brand I was, uh, one project that had a booth, you know, and I was consulting with them for, they, they, a legitimate question that they asked me, cause you know, um, a shooting had happened a couple weeks before, um, they asked they they, they asked, what did you, what do I think of bulletproof vests as swag? Wait, what? Yeah. That's fucking wild. Yeah. So, um. It's uh you know a little wild westy but um I don't know I think uh you know everything has to get a little worse before it gets better and uh we're on the road to better you know eventually hopefully sooner rather than later but I will agree with you that Dubai is super safe um Dubai teaches you bad habits of, on how safe it is um you literally can like you have you, have you, you leave your Dubai? laptop and your phone on your on your on your table at at um uh a lunch uh, at a diner outside and you go walk to go throw your trash away if it starts raining uh and one of the staff is nearby like they become like sacrificial they'll come and like stand over your stuff to like keep the rain off of it Oh, the peasants will do that. No, and it's not even it's not even the peasants. It's it's like random really? strangers. Wow! Like, 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 yeah. It's no, it's it's not no peasant stuff. It's it's like respect of others' property. Oh, okay, okay. I, I'm following what you're saying. I I didn't know what you meant by it. Yeah, like random, like random strangers, like that live there. You know, or are of that culture. You know, 
So they're watching over the unit. Okay. You know, so it's like, I'm going to look out for your stuff because I hope you'll do the same for mine. I got you. I yeah. Got you. It's pretty. And, and the respect level to genders, to lifestyle choices. The only thing you can't do is you can't be drunk out on the streets. Yeah. You know, that's fair. You pretty much drink in the hotel. I have a friend that's from there. Uh, his dad's like an Emirati or some shit or some. No, he's a diplomat. He's a diplomat. And he was saying that, like, if you go to get drunk, he's like, just go get drunk in your hotel. And then you go right upstairs and he goes, you'll be fine. You'll never have to worry. Yep. And if you go to if you go to one of the hotels that has a club in it that they're serving, they'll stay open later and feed you food so you can sober up and they'll have a cab come right to you to the door and they'll help you get there and then you're and they'll call ahead to your hotel so the staff is there you know they it's yeah yeah i think so. I, I think that'd be a cool fucking place to be bro but yeah um but man you ever go to saudi what Did you ever go to saudi arabia uh not yet just dubai okay yeah. um did you stay in a hostel there Nope. I, I stayed uh I stayed in a hotel outside of the city center. Are they fairly priced or are they like stupid? Uh in the city center they're stupid. Um outside the city center, you know, um it was anywhere from twenty to thirty five dollars a night. Yeah. Longer if in and, and they have furnished apartments, you know, in the city center and stuff like that. Um, yeah, long term leases, cool. short term leases. It's 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 pretty nice, but uh, yeah, it's a good place to build, um, and it's a and it's a really good central central hub too, like New York. Yeah, so, but uh, man. Uh, we're going to be closing up in just a minute. Remember how we were talking about Zen last week? Yeah. Man, uh, I got, um, I'm trying to get an interview scheduled with Jack, uh, Levin right now, but, um, he did an amazing interview today with Trevor, Trevon. Um, um, Hey dog, my phone's literally about to die. I'm so sorry. I got to run, but Hey, go check it out. And DJ in on, that, in on that shit. That's all I'm saying. But I love you. And, you know, as we end this night, Jeff, see you there. Thank you for joining. Um, we are here in Miami. Um, We're going to be at Quantum the next three days. And, um, yeah, it's, uh, it's going to be fun. Uh, we're going to be doing a lot of work with Banksa. We got brought on by them. Uh, amazing company for fiat to crypto on ramping and crypto to fiat off ramping solutions as well. Um, and so we're going to really work to see what projects we can bring solutions to for that. So we can help get rid of some of those choke points of people onboarding into web three, make it easier uh, for play to earn games, um, you know, to integrate and it'll be really amazing. Um, so yeah, that is it on the flip side um on everything else it it's good to be back in miami so uh shout out to the entire web3 miami family we will see you shortly and with that we're going to end tonight uh on our closing words for the night uh a closed mouth does not get fed and you cannot feed a closed mouth and the best knock 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 joke ever knock knock who's there <laughs>